danger, high voltage. That's what we want to see. So this is uh, the battery pack out of a 2007-ish uh, Honda IMA hybrid car thing. Uh, so it's uh, a really, really old hybrid vehicle battery and a local uh, vehicle service place contacted me and they wanted to know uh, if this thing is worth working on because this is a very old-timey battery uh, it's obviously tiny for being used in an electric vehicle and uh, that's because it just has this like a automatic start help thing where there's a, a 12 kilowatt electric motor built into the motor which can give you a bit of a push uh, uh, to get going I don't know how it works but uh, it's not a very big thing and it's not a primary traction motor of a vehicle uh, and uh, since this is a battery that's uh, over 10 years old, uh, it's uh, started to give in and the vehicle is giving you bad, you know, like it's given a bad battery warning. And this is a very simple battery. It's uh, just built up of a bunch of NIM uh, nickel metal hard drive uh, D cells, basically, and uh, buying these uh, pre-built sticks for this battery. Uh, that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's just a stick of uh, six cells going that way and six cells going the other way and terminating there. Uh, so we have 12 cells going around like a U and these the series strings are like 50 bucks plus shipping. So if this battery has suffered a failure that's uh, of such nature that it's just a couple of cells that have gone bad, it might be worth just replacing those, since this vehicle obviously is quite cheap nowadays, it's not really worth buying an entirely new battery that's uh, going to end up well over a thousand euros for a five, six thousand issue euro vehicle and that's not really worth it. Uh, however, a vehicle will not operate properly unless the battery is working, so we just want to get this thing into basic working order to last it another couple of years until we have to get a new battery or figure something out. Uh, so what I'm going to do and what I've got wired up in this amazing mess of wires in the back of my van is a, a cell by cell battery test. So we've got the big Bertha sitting there and the control computer on top and these are quite suitable batteries because they're about 15-16 volts per cell being a 12 in series uh, so this will easily run a test on Big Bertha which is built for up to about 15 volts. I'm going to have to drop down to maybe 8 amps test current but at the end of this we're going to have a capacity for each of the cell strings and if one of them is considerably worse than the, the others uh, we'll try just buying that one or a couple of them and swapping it out and see if it's going to run. Uh, we don't know but uh, Let's see if that's the problem to begin with. Alright, I've brought out a couple of big guns chargers uh, just to be able to shove a bit of extra current into these cells uh, prior to doing the capacity test. Uh, these cells are rated 5.5 uh, to 6.9 amp hours each depending on who you ask. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm gonna expect that we're maybe gonna get half of that at most. A uh, curious thing about this system is, if you do the math, if, if we have a 12 kilowatt electric motor and a 120 volt battery, uh, that's going to be a discharge of 100 amps. So these things are going to be working themselves to the breaking point and beyond. I'm honestly surprised they've lasted this long, although there's probably some power still coming from the motor, uh, from the engine of a uh, vehicle. Well. Uh, I, I can't imagine these uh, are able to put a 12 kilowatts uh, and survive for as long as they have. We can't really test their impedance well, very reliably. I don't have any load that does high enough current. I guess we could try testing a car with them, like starting a car, but uh, nah, not going to do that. Uh, so yeah, just going to let them charge for a while. We're pushing about uh, 20 amps into them all in parallel. So. Yeah, that's a four in parallel and that's about five amps per cell so charging at roughly one c you can do up to uh, 18 volts uh, which is about 1.5 volts per cell which is what you usually charge in an emh cell with and that's going to take a while still we're at about 17 volts per pack a couple of them were more charged than the others i actually noted the starting voltage on each of them and it was not very even so uh, 
might be if we're super duper lucky it's just that we have a cell imbalance error and just doing this is going to fix the car but uh, i doubt it but we'll see in a while once they've gotten up to the correct voltage yeah this is actually not looking too good because these packs have three temperature sensors built in they seem to be normal 10k ntc so just shove my multimeter probes into one of them and uh, the other ones are at 10k uh, this one's at 6.3 and uh, dropping so that means it will have temperature rising considerably uh, where that sensor is i don't know where obviously close to the cells that are being charged uh, that's actually rising so fast that uh, i've turned the charge off i don't like that at all so yeah i, I think we're going to see at least one failure in this just based on the fact that we have super rapid temperature increase somewhere inside the pack at this point we might as well just start the test so the cell voltages are keeping quite steady we have two of them are higher than the others and but they're all dropping to around the same rate that's really, since we have like 10 cells in series that's not too bad or well, 12. so yeah let's just turn on the load and see how it's going to behave and none of them are really sticking out but the surface charge is going to take a while to get used up so yeah i'll check back once this is done i got the termination voltage set to 10.8 volts which is about uh, 0.8 volts per cell where they are fairly empty okay the tests have been run and this pack has big big problems you can see on the roughly middle row there that uh, these four cells have completely different capacities uh, one came out at 2.3 amperes well two of them did one at 4.5 and the final one at 3.1 and uh, what's worse is the discharge curve because this is telling us a tale uh, so up until the 600 second mark everything was going fine but then wham first one cell dies then another and when this happens that means that those cells are completely empty and they are now being uh, reverse charged and that destroys uh, any mh cells uh, and all of the packs are pretty much the same uh, they have one cell dropping up super early in the string so thus far the only one that's not completely horrifying is the one that measured uh, 4.5 amperes but that one still had one cell that dropped off way before uh, the others the other one just has uh, the others just have several cells dropping uh, roughly in the middle of a discharge and that is very very bad uh, the only one of these sticks that i would consider using is uh, the one that measured 4.5 amp hours uh, the other three are bad they are beyond rescue so this is not looking good for this vehicle at all but we'll have to do let well, these guys charge up and uh, do the other cells as well and see see what we get all right so uh i've now let the cells charge up at uh, about, uh, a set voltage has hit the big passage bus to about uh, uh, 16 volts ish uh, constant voltage and let them charge and uh, uh, doing that of course since they are nickel metal hydride cells the final result in the thermal runaway where the cells started drawing more and more current as they heated up and they are quite hot right now the ntc is at uh, what, 2k so yeah that's uh, fairly warm i can feel the pack is warm if i touch the back side they are probably about 50c on the inside so they certainly do not need to get any warmer uh, on treating these as a lost cause basically from what i've seen uh, so what i'm going to do now is i'll set the small pace by up there to uh, trickle charge and i'm going to leave that overnight 200 milliamps across all these cells is uh, not a big deal that's uh, just a few watts so that's not enough to uh, heat the entire pack uh, no matter what uh, so hopefully that's uh, just gonna uh, basically overcharge the, the, the good cells and maybe charge the bad cells since we're probably at a quite low state of charge hopefully that's the case but they've just turned imbalanced and they're not completely ruined yet and uh, yeah then, then i'm just gonna do the same thing on the other cells as we test those i'm gonna uh, just disconnect these in the morning and uh, 
It'll do the same thing on the next pack and then the final few as well. Since we can do four, so four sections at a time, we are going to have to do three tests since we seem to have 11 uh, packs there. So we're going to do four, then eight, and then finally the last three. So yeah, not liking this. Well, hello. It seems I spoke too early because it's now the next day and I've done another test on the same cells. And look at that. This is the same cell we saw a moment ago. And uh, while performance is still not good, it's just uh, reaching about uh, a 3 amp hours, uh, this discharge curve is far, far better than what we saw before. So in this case, it seems the cells were just unbalanced and the same is true for all of the sticks. So, uh, I'm actually cautiously, okay, cautiously hopeful for the rest of the pack. So, uh, we've moved to the next set of cells. I've uh, charged the first set up uh, as far as I'll go without overheating. And uh, yeah, the next set is charging up now uh, on a balanced charge as well. Uh, so to avoid having to super deeply discharge the cells and uh, reverse charge the bad ones. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, balance charge before cycling uh, the uh, cells the first time. So we're just charging these up right now. I've got two pairs of plants going. I've got this guy uh, pushing a bit of extra into one of them because uh, uh, all of these guys are sharing uh, about uh, five amps. But this guy's got uh, four amps all in his own. He's got him much lower. Her voltage is just uh, drawing a much, much more current than the others, so I'm giving it a few extra amps just to make sure it uh, gets up to as high a level as possible. Uh, because if it's uh, sitting at a lower voltage, it's going to uh, have a cell that is uh, lower, uh, at a lower state of charge uh, than the other ones. So hopefully these are going to perform reasonably well uh, right out of the gate. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope for that. Three words, forced air cooling. So yeah, I grabbed a fan uh, that uh, makes a huge difference. It uh, stops the cell from overheating substantially. So that thing's gonna be running pretty much non-stop as long as we're working on this pack. Uh, since we, I have been monitoring the temperatures on the NTC, uh, just uh, w we are dropping huge amounts of temperature with that fan, even though there's almost no flow through here since it's so crowded, just the small amount of circulating air makes a huge difference. Uh, also decided to use min-max average mode on a meter because then we have a way to see if the pack is heating up or cooling down once we get back. Uh, since uh, if we go to the average value, if this is moving up, uh, that means the pack is cooling down since uh, the value is lower than it's been historically. And if it's moving uh, down, then the pack is heating up uh, like when you're at the end of the charge. So uh, yeah, right now that moved a bit, so it's generally uh, cooling down since the value is increasing. So that's good. We're charging the batteries right now. And you can generally see the thermal runaway quite easily on that because the average value will be uh, moving up uh, about once a second, even if you've been averaging for a long time. And that just lets me know it here, yeah, we're, we're firmly running away. Better slow down the charge. Anyway, I've run a bunch more cycles. We've moved to ne the next final set of three cells. And uh, uh, the results for uh, the last set is very, very interesting. Uh, so, the sets uh, self we're working on a moment ago are these guys for the extra rover, uh, extra column rather, and uh, the first cycle after doing the uh, initial balance charge, they performed terribly. Like uh, one was down to 1.6 amp, 1, 1.6 amp hours. And then after doing a long, slow recharge overnight, I, I fed it about 200 milliamps for 10 hours. They were no better off and this one even got worse. So what I did then was went, oh yeah, this thing's fucked. Let's just charge the shit out of it. So I gave it about uh, 10 amps for, well, well, not 10 amps, maybe 
uh, five or uh, five to eight amps. It, va it varied a bit. Uh, and uh, I just uh, let it charge until it uh, would overheat basically and the fan couldn't keep up. And uh, once I was done doing that, it's bloody well the best fuse cells in the entire pack. All of them over four amps and a single one over five. That is incredible. Like uh, this one guy went from 1.61 amps right with a finger 1.61 there down to 1.47 and then covered up to 4.44 but just like being allowed to set my big charger for a few hours it wasn't even a super long charge it was like uh, five hours or so uh, at an average five amps uh, total for uh, all the four cells we were testing then and there. So I'm very surprised at that result and I'm, uh, this pack is going to stay here over the weekend, it's Friday night right now, so if I'm feeling really generous I'm going to uh, do a final set of tests on all the cells giving them that treatment to see uh, if uh, we can get better performance out of the uh, top row cells which we started out working at because uh, none of them are really anywhere over 3 amps or so, they're not doing too good. Uh, but we're going to have to see what the final 3 rows of uh, have to give us. Uh, if they show similar performance uh, as the uh, middle cells uh, by g getting the same treatment, uh, yeah, that's that's very good. Maybe we can get this entire pack up to like uh, just under 4 amps, which would be far better than I would expect. Now we still don't know anything about the internal resistance of the cells, yada yada yada. We don't know how they will work in the vehicle, but capacity-wise we have certainly identified several issues. Like some of these cells, bloody well one amp hour, but they've been like 20% charged when the other cells in the same series string have been full. And that's of course going to give them a higher impedance and that's going to get noticed by the ECU when you're trying to use the electric motor you've got 25% charge when you think you've got a hundred. Uh, I've done some research on these uh, Honda IMA uh, style uh, hybrids and uh, they do have monitoring for each of the uh, double sticks uh, so they have monitoring every 15 volts or so but they have no balance charging at all. So these cells have never been balance charged since they were sold in like 2007 or something. So it is a bloody miracle that they are no worse off than they are. I would expect these to be completely destroyed. They've been in a 158 volt string for 10 years, 12 years, more than that, and they're not completely destroyed. Uh, say what you will about the design, they have picked very high quality batteries for the job, that is for sure. Well, this is surprising, it's just gonna die. Number zero. There it went. So, number zero, there to the left, uh, just clocked in at 4.93 amp hours, and the other two cells are still going strong. That is not at all expected. So the cell that just turned off at uh, almost 5 amp hours, uh, that was 2.12 amp hours. You can see it's right there just a few hours ago. And I have not put a lot of effort into this. Uh, Clearly, doing high-tech maintenance on this kind of battery does not pay off because the only treatment these cells have gotten is a brutal charge. I, I, I set them to go at about 10 amps for a bunch of hours till they started overheating, then I turned it down to 2 amps for about an hour, and then I did the cycle, and that's all I've done to this batch of cells. And we've more than doubled the capacity of this guy right here. That is, that is proper unexpected, proper impressive. I did not expect that result at all. And the other ones are doing even better. So, 
believe both of them just breached 5 amperes. Uh, they're dropping off quite rapidly, both of them. Especially number one, yeah. Number one is going to go any second. 12.1, 12.07, 12.0. Yeah, that's the black screen. That's going to go, so it's going to clock in at like 5.2. Wow, I am um, flabbergasted. I did not expect better results. And it is proper loud in here with all these fans running, I'll tell you that much. Alright, so the day after shooting that, I uh, brought the battery back to the workshop and uh, we put it back in the vehicle and uh, it worked just fine. Uh, we didn't have time to take it for a proper long test run, but we uh, did a few really hard takeoffs uh, uh, on the road by the workshop, and uh, we lost the check engine light and we lost the IMA error light on the dashboard. Uh, the vehicle would uh, accelerate just fine under under the electric boost power it provides, and uh, I measured the voltage across the pack. It's a 158 volt. Uh, uh, pack and under full acceleration uh, the battery voltage did not dip under 150 volts which is absolutely fine by my standards. Uh, the cells aren't new uh, I was uh, basically prepared for the battery to drop down to like 130 volts and uh, for the check engine light to come back on but uh, frankly and much to my surprise uh, this seems to be successful. Uh, it's been a, a couple of weeks since uh, this repair was performed and I haven't even got some of the thing back for a warrant repair. Uh, so really, I think this worked. I bloody well think it worked. Uh, so yeah, that's that I guess, the end of the story. Uh, if you've had a battery with a similar issue, uh, perhaps this is worth doing. You could do it with very simple means. Uh, but yeah, can I sign up with that? Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you enjoy yourself.